Welcome to the PAS Report Podcast. If you're tired of censorship, outraged by government abuses, and thirsty for real insights, then you're in the right place. Get ready, because here, the fight for freedom never ends. Here's your host, Professor Nick Giordano. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the PAS Report Podcast. This is your host, Nick Giordano, and I'm glad you could join me today. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure that you subscribe and follow this podcast so you never miss an episode. Also, don't forget to visit the PAS Report website, pasreport.com, and share this episode with your family and friends and on social media because people need to wake up. Now, in Europe, we may be witnessing a seismic shift take place, right? Over the weekend, millions of Europeans went to the polls and conservative parties, the parties that lean right, they made significant gains in the system. It appears that Europeans are finally sick and tired of watching their cultures continue to be denigrated by those in power. Europeans are tired of being dictated to. They're tired of repeatedly being told that their civilization is toxic, that they're responsible for all the ills of the world. They're tired of the migration, the crime, the loss of their cultural identity. And so they're seeking an alternative now. Now, will it continue? I don't know. That, that's the million-dollar question. Only time is going to tell. But it certainly has reverberations throughout the world because we're facing many of the same problems, similar problems here. Obviously, we're different, right? So when it comes to the idea of migration, the United States is a much different place because we don't have one cultural identity. We, we don't have one ethnicity. We don't have shared history or shared language, anything like that, shared tr- customs and traditions. But we do have elites in the United States who seek more power, and they routinely denigrate American values and the American identity. They, they denigrate the, the founding fathers, the entire system that was created. And whenever you push back against them, they're quick to label you. They, they label you as racist, you're a bigot, you're a misogynist, you're fascist, you're transphobic, homophobic, fatphobic. I mean, so many different labels they choose to throw on you because they want to create an atmosphere of fear. That's what it's about. They know that if they instill fear, people will self-censor because people don't want to be attacked. They don't want to be ridiculed and marginalized. They don't want the threat of having their livelihoods destroyed. And it all harkens back to a failed education system, a system that does not produce students with a strong understanding of our founding, our history, and our principles. A system that does not introduce courage in any sort of way, and they often provide misleading and simplistic explanations of our founding and the founding fathers. And the reason that they do that is because it makes it easier to undermine their vision. It makes it easier to force the change throughout society. It's a social engineering experiment, essentially, and this failure is generational. It brings us closer to the authoritarianism that I've been warning since I started this podcast. You know, John Adams once said that children should be educated and instructed on the principles of freedom. And this statement underscores the importance our founding fathers placed on education. They envisioned an education system where students would be well versed in American history and the principles that underpin this republic. Founders like Noah Webster believed that an American-centric education was vital to our survival, and he asserted that students should be deeply knowledgeable about our country's history. And then most importantly, you have James Madison, who warned that the only guardian of true liberty was knowledge. But today, our education system has strayed far from this vision. It has failed to live up to its obligations, and as a result, the American people have failed to live up to theirs. This failure is evident every single day, every day where we see so many Americans willingly surrender their liberties for greater government control. It's a shift towards dependency. That's what we have, a a shift to becoming a slave to the state, not one of self-reliance. And it's a direct threat to the principles of liberty and limited government that have defined our nation for so long since our inception. Just, Just look And what happened over the weekend where you had these anti-Israel, pro-Hamas mobs descending on Washington, D.C.? And I put out a a tweet about it or an Instagram post about it. And I had one commenter that was, well, why do you equate anti-Israeli with pro-Hamas? I'm like, well, because they're chanting death to America. 
They're chanting death to Israel. They're calling for October 7, 10,000 times. It's pretty clear where they stand. You have a bunch of these entitled spoiled brats who believe that they have the right to deface property, vandalize statues and monuments, throw smoke bombs on the White House lawn, pelt offices with bottles and rocks. When you look at some of the videos that are out there, you would think that it was an insurrection or something. But of course, no one's held accountable, and that's why you have these self-entitled brats that operate with impunity. Just take a listen to this sound clip from Congresswoman Ilan Omar, where she lists all the things the government should provide for the people. Student debt cancellation, free lunches, free college, so much more. Take a listen. Although we have made significant strides, we still have a lot of work ahead of us. As someone who represents one of the youngest districts in Congress in the country, as a member of the Education and Workforce Committee, I see firsthand the work that needs to be done to better the lives of every young person in this country. From increasing the Bell Grant eligibility to passing our Chairwomen's College for All Bill to the Universal School Meals to fully funding IDEA, and getting full student debt cancellation. We have to use every single tool available to us to alleviate the barriers our young people are facing. We have to see young people's, we have to see young people's call for systematic change. It is time to make sure their calls for change is a reality. I know we can do it and let's get it done. Just give everyone everything. You have this socialist agenda outlined by Congressman Omar, and all it's designed to do is increase government dependency. But even worse, it fosters the sense of entitlement that we've been witnessing over the last several decades. Entitlement where people believe that they can do whatever the hell they want, consequences be damned. And most importantly, it's designed to absolve individuals of personal responsibility, hard work, and merit. Values that have made our system great. Values that are fundamental to the American ethos. And as we have seen the erosion of these values as they come under danger, as the government gains greater control, we're inching closer and closer to a full-blown authoritarianism. We're not there yet, but we're coming really close because history has shown us time and again that when governments take more control, individual liberties are sacrificed. And the government begins to crack down on those freedoms. This is not rocket science. It's not a new phenomenon that exists. Thinkers and leaders have warned about this push for decades. But it's gained unprecedented ground in recent times because of a population that is increasingly ignorant of history, especially American history. And this ignorance has allowed for the manipulation and racialization within our society. Tactics used to undermine the vision of the founders by erasing history. Those who seek greater control aim to ensure that few can challenge them because you are not able to defend what you don't know. They manipulate minds by undermining basic and universal truths, making the masses believe that the government is the only solution to the problems we face. And we have to recognize that this push for government control, whether it's called communism, socialism, oligarchy, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's fundamentally about establishing authoritarianism here in the United States. And in such a system, the few get to control the masses. This is why it is more important than ever to understand what is going on and how perverse the leftist ideology really is. It all comes down to preserving our values, American values, liberty, freedom, limited government. It's about preserving the American identity because the nefarious push The push that undermines basic and universal truths, that's the point. If you attempt to destroy truth, you can mold society into whatever you want it to be. And that's exactly what's happening. And whenever someone tells you that this is conspiracy theory or that the push is overhyped, it's really not that bad. They are either willfully lying or they're blind to the realities we face. And I'm going to explain it all when we get back from this quick break. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Are you prepared for the unexpected? As a former emergency manager, being prepared is not a choice. It's a necessity. And that's where the wellness company comes in. Imagine having the peace of mind that you're equipped to handle any medical crisis from tick bites to the latest pandemic. The wellness company's medical emergency kit is your lifeline. Packed with essential medications like ivermectin, emergency antibiotics, antivirals, and more. This kit is your ultimate preparedness solution. The wellness company's team of renowned medical professionals, including Dr. Peter McCullough, Dr. James Thorpe, Dr. Harvey Risch, Dr. Drew Pinsky, and 
more. They are truth-seeking doctors, and they have designed a kit that sets the gold standard for safety and prevention. Don't wait for the next crisis to strike. Visit twc.health PAS and use promo code PAS for an exclusive 10% discount just for being a listener of this show. Prepare today, rest easy tomorrow, use code PAS at checkout. Welcome back, everyone. So when it comes to the degradation within our society, the push to dismantle the concept of truth, they do it overtly. It's not like they try and hide it that much, right? And I've spoken about this many times. Just look at everything that took place during the pandemic, how they routinely lied to us. And it was all about power and control. Look at the Biden administration's national strategy for countering domestic terrorism. It's a political agenda that's being pushed. Truth be damned. And it's not like Republicans are doing anything about this. How many congressional hearings have there been about the national strategy for countering domestic terrorism? Now, this is out in the open. It's not like the Biden administration has hid this document away from view. It's not. It's actually been pretty transparent about this, right? We've seen the school board memo. We've seen the memo targeting traditional Catholics. Uh, we have Moms for Liberty. As I spoke with Tiffany Justice on Monday, it was a fantastic interview. I encourage everyone to listen to the episode. But she's her organization is being monitored the same way that the Department of Justice monitors the Ku Klux Klan. So they do things overtly. It's not a new tactic. It's politics. And we've seen this game get played throughout history. Sometimes it has successes. Other times it fails. However, there's also the subtle means that they use. And I'm going to play about a three-minute clip. It's a clip of a father and a son. The son is a fifth grader at a school in San Diego, California. Now, keep that in mind, because many believe that San Diego is more Republican-leaning, it's more red. But listen closely at the level of brainwashing that's going on in this school. Take a listen. Hi, my name is Carlos Encinas. My wife, Jenny, and I, we have two boys, ages 11 and 9, and wanted to share an experience we had just last week with our oldest. So we learned that in his fifth grade class, his fifth, fifth grade teacher read a book called My Shadow is Pink. Dad's shadow is blue. It is big. It is strong. But when I stand with it, I just feel so wrong. My heart skips a beat as I put on a dress. Your shadow is pink. I see now it's true. It's not just a shadow. It's your innermost you. So stand up with your shadow and yell, this is me. And some, they will love you, and some, they will not. But those that do love you, they'll love you a lot. He went on to say, yeah, we read this book in class, the fifth grade class, and then we had to go to our buddy class, which is kindergartners, age five, and we had to sit down with them, and then we watched a video of the same book being narrated in a video format. His shadow loves dance with its turns and its twirls. Her shadow, she hides it. Her shadow likes girls. I, I hoped that my buddy wouldn't understand it, what, any, what any of it meant. We both thought that it's not okay that they're showing this to kindergartners. And um, after, we had to do an activity where they drew a shadow with their favorite color. I never asked if I could opt out, but I mean, because I, because I, I didn't like want to get like in trouble or anything. And that's really what made him uncomfortable was he's got this buddy. They pair the fifth graders, eleven year olds, with kindergartners, age five, as part of a mentorship where they can, you know, first time at school. And these older brothers, older sisters are buddies with them throughout the entire school year. They spend between a half hour and an hour each week together. What's most concerning is the school is using our child to disseminate this information to someone that is clearly looking up to them, a five-year-old. So we wrote the fifth grade teacher. We asked the how and the why, and that response is actually even more concerning. We, the response was, well, this is just an exercise in colors. Uh, the buddies are just playing with you know, their shadows and asking what color their shadows are. And, you know, it's just, it's not gender identification, has nothing to do with that. It's not just a shadow, it's your innermost you. We're clearly in disagreement on that, but we want parents to be aware. And the fact that they're using kids to teach other kids. There is a weekly recap that we get from our specific fifth, fifth grade class. And for whatever reason, they did not include discussion on this book kind of a hidden agenda. I would encourage every family to start asking questions and, 
and, and start sharing the facts that they have because uh, together um, we can make a difference. Now that's astonishing to me. And the book in question is My Shadow is Pink, and it centers on the themes of gender fluidity and the idea of transgenderism. You have fifth graders that were required to read this book, and then even worse, to add insult to injury, they have to read it to their kindergarten buddies. Yet this content was never disclosed to the parents in the weekly notifications about what their children are learning for the week. It was never disclosed. When the father inquired about this, both the teacher and the principal denied the book's true content. Instead, they claimed it was merely about shapes and colors and inclusivity. This is not just misleading. It's a blatant attempt to hide the truth from parents. What we have witnessed over the course of the last few years has been horrifying, where we have certain school districts throughout the country that actively tell students not to tell their parents certain things. Understand that that's a subtle, subtle form of brainwashing that's taking place, that you cannot trust your parents, so you can't tell them. And if the principal and teacher truly believed that there was nothing wrong with the book, why did they feel the need to conceal it? And the principal went even so far to say that parents would not be notified about books dealing with similar content topics in the future. Students don't have the ability to opt out of these lessons. What the hell is going on? Who do these people think they are? It shows that how they believe that parents shouldn't have a say when it comes to their child's education. They believe that all children are wards at a state when they're in the classroom. That much is clear. The principal got offended. That the father speaking out, well, he made teachers feel unsafe. Even worse was the response from some of the parents. Instead of supporting the father and son, some of the parents mobilized to ostracize and criticize them, labeling them as hateful and racist. Now, this reaction is nothing short of a Stalinist tactic designed to ensure that others think twice before speaking out. It's a clear example of how dissent in this country is being crushed, how truth is being dismantled. And this incident, it's only one incident. There are many more. But this incident illustrates just how nefarious this movement is. It's not merely about pushing a political agenda. It's about brainwashing. It's about indoctrination. The aim to manipulate young minds, instill a particular ideology without parental knowledge or consent. That's what it comes down to. And I want to put this in perspective because I think it's really important. Only 13% of American students demonstrate proficiency in American history, and only 22% demonstrate proficiency in civics. Yet, instead of focusing on improving these vital areas of education, you have schools prioritizing content like gender ideology. This is not just a misallocation of educational resources. This is a deliberate strategy to keep students ignorant of their own history and their own civic responsibilities. Instead of pushing this divisive crap, how about we teach students about the founding principles of our nation? How's about that? How about we emphasize the importance of liberty and freedom? the importance of personal responsibility, the importance of civic obligations. These are the values that have made America a beacon of hope and opportunity throughout the world. Maybe we should actually focus on that, but they don't want to. Because the subtle brainwashing, it's a tactic to accumulate more power by keeping the population uninformed, by keeping the population focused on divisive issues, those in power can more easily control and manipulate the masses. And this is exactly what the founding fathers warned against. They understood that knowledge is the only guardian of true liberty, as James Madison stated. And when people are educated about their rights and responsibilities, they're better equipped to defend their freedom. We are witnessing a systematic effort to undermine these principles. And as government gains more control over the dissemination of information, whether it be on social media, the internet, whether it's in our schools, we are living in Orwell's 1984 dystopia. The erosion of American values, it's not some accidental byproduct. It's the deliberate objective. And that's why we need to be proactive in combating and having our voices heard. We have to demand transparency and accountability from our institutions. Unfortunately, too many Americans have been asleep at the wheel. They've been ignoring the obvious for far too long, but we can't say that we weren't warned. And I'll talk about that after this quick break. So everyone, hang tight. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. And in this last segment, I, I want to confront the sobering reality that we stand on the precipice of losing everything that previous generations fought so hard to ensure. That may sound like a grim assessment, but this is the reality that we're faced with. And you could ignore reality all day long, but sooner or later, it has a habit of kicking people in their behinds. The liberties and freedoms, the prosperity that we enjoy, 
are now all at risk, largely because we have taken them for granted. We've allowed ignorance and incompetence to guide this country. For decades, there have been repeated warnings about the dangers we face, yet these warnings have all been ignored, whether it's Dwight D. Eisenhower, and I played his farewell address many of times on this podcast, whether it's him, whether it's others, we've ignored them. But one such warning came from G. Edward Griffin, who spoke about how our racial differences could be exploited to usher in authoritarianism by promoting social unrest, introducing socialist policies. Now, some people have dismissed G. Edward Griffin as a quack. He's nothing more than a conspiracy theorist. But I want you to take a listen to his words. As early as 1928, the communists declared that the racial differences among our people constituted the weakest and most vulnerable point in our social fabric. By constantly probing and straining at this one spot, they calculated that eventually the cloth could be torn apart and that Americans could be divided, weakened, and perhaps even set against each other in open combat. We must not be led into placing the blame for the riots, the civil disorders, on the Negro people of our nation. Even those few who are promoting hatred and violence in the black communities are not themselves the cause. They're merely being used by forces far bigger than they are to promote the violent phase of the revolution in America. Hoping to avoid further violence and bloodshed, the public is to be pressured into accepting measures that will move the country gradually and legally toward communism, but without calling it that. The strategy of the proletarian revolution calls for the quiet conversion of our government into a communist regime, but under the banner of socialism. The uh, new program of the Communist Party on this subject has this to say. The term socialism describes but the first stage of a new society that in its full development is called communism. Socialism is a transitional stage. The building of socialism is the communist revolution in America. It represents the process whereby our country can be moved gradually toward communism without the people even being aware of it. They have one and only one solution for all problems. More government, more government, and then more and more until it's total government. Total government is communism. We must not be fooled into thinking that the causes of our civil turmoil are such things as poverty, poor housing, lack of education, and similar social or economic factors. As a matter of fact, most of today's self-styled revolutionaries, black and white, come from good homes, could earn better than average incomes if they wanted to work. And in fact, they're products of some of the finest institutions of higher learning. We mustn't resort to violence either as a means of furthering political or social goals. And we must do everything humanly possible to discourage others from doing so. We must support our local police. Nothing can be quite so damaging to police morale and efficiency as converting every arrest into a trial of the policeman instead of the criminal. Now, in passing, ladies and gentlemen, you may have wondered why the Communist Party has been a staunch supporter of the drive to place a black studies curriculum into our high schools and colleges. Well, the reason becomes obvious the minute you take a look at the textbooks and the study guides under the guise of academic balance. These courses have become a brilliant device for conditioning young people to accept still one more part of the total program for revolution. We must discover the identity of those individuals, both above and below, who consciously are furthering the communist program for revolution, and then remove them from their positions of trust and leadership. Now, of course, the minute you begin to think along these lines, you'll become the target of a whole barrage of attacks. You'll be called a right-wing extremist, a fascist, or at least a dictator. Some years ago, I happened to attend a meeting where several anti-communist refugees from behind the Iron Curtain were called upon to relate their personal experiences. One of the refugees spoke up and he said, you know, I came to America expecting to find a nation of free men, but instead, I find exactly the same thing. Everywhere I look, I see men and women who know that communists are making headway in this country. They know that something must be done and that someone must stand up to them. But they themselves do nothing. They remain silent because they're afraid that if they speak out or take a stand publicly, it'll be bad for business. They may lose a client. They may even lose their jobs. If communism should ever come to America, 
will face more death, destruction, and human suffering than any people in history has ever faced at the hands of their invading conquerors. It's literally a question of life and death for all of us. And it's about time the American people began to face up to that fact and to act accordingly. Thank you. Now, I know that was a long sound clip. I try not to play sound clips that are that long, but I think his warning was eerily prescient. We see how racial and ethnic divisions are being exploited and manipulated today to create this division and push for increased government control because the tactic's not new. It's a strategy to weaken our society, make us more dependent on a centralized authority. When things get bad enough, people are much more willing to grant the government more power in hopes that the government could restore some semblance of stability. And our founding fathers understood that a well-informed populace creates a united populace that this is what can maintain liberty. Unfortunately, our current trajectory shows a shift away from these principles. So now let's hear from President Ronald Reagan, who eloquently warned that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Take a listen. Our founding fathers here in this country brought about the only true revolution that has ever taken place in man's history. Every other revolution simply exchanged one set of rulers for another set of rulers. But only here, did that little band of men so advanced beyond their time that the world has never seen their like since evolve the idea that you and I have within ourselves the God-given right and the ability to determine our own destiny. But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Those words resonate so deeply with me today. You know, the freedoms we cherish are not guaranteed by any stretch of the imagination. They have to constantly be defended and preserved with every generation. Reagan was one of a few who actually got it, and he emphasized that these liberties are fragile, and they can be lost. And it reminds me of what John Adams warned about at the founding of this country, that liberty once lost is lost forever. It happens much more quickly that a free society goes into an authoritarian society. It's a fast process. It is a much longer and deadlier process for an authoritarian society to become a free society. And the erosion of our education system, the manipulation of societal issues, the push for greater government control all contribute to the gradual loss of freedom. And we've been complacent, assuming that these liberties that we enjoy, well, they're always going to be there. It's not possible that we're going to lose them. And, And our generation has never recognized the need to defend them actively because we've had it so easy. And even if President Trump wins the next election, he is not going to be the savior of this republic. His policies will certainly benefit the country, especially more so than the current administration. He may help us step back from the cliff cliff that we find ourselves on. However, without comprehensive reforms, the underlying problems will remain. The issues plaguing our nation, they're only going to go dormant for a short period of time. We need real reforms, real reforms that are actually extremely hard to undo, real reforms that aim to contract the power of government, not just temporarily, but permanently. This means a reduction in the number of federal agencies, cutting the unnecessary programs, cutting funding to all these different agencies and departments, returning power to the states and the people. Only by limiting the reach of the federal government can we restore the balance that the founding fathers envisioned. This decentralization will be crucial to ensuring that liberty and freedom endure. Now, if we don't do that in the next administration, then it's not going to matter because sooner or later, you're going to get another power-hungry Republican or Democrat that will just reconstitute everything. That's why you need to dismantle it. Just reflect on the warnings. Ronald Reagan, G. Edward Griffin, reflect on those warnings. And it becomes clear what's going on, what we're living through in this moment in time, how our own ignorance and complacency have brought us to this point. We have to wake up to the reality that we are throwing away the hard-fought gains of previous generations. They endured tremendous sacrifices. We, we just celebrated the 80th anniversary of D-Day. And that generation endured the most sacrifices to ensure that we could live better lives than they did. 
It is our responsibility to honor their legacy by being proactive. The push for government control is eroding the foundations of the republic. We have to stop with the manipulation, with the brainwashing, with the indoctrination. Understand the clear pattern that's aimed at increasing government power, diminishing individual freedom. Which America do you want to live in? Do you want America that ensures that future generations understand and cherish the principles of liberty and freedom? If you do, we need to teach our children about it. We need to teach our children about American history, about civic responsibilities, the importance of personal responsibility. God forbid we do that. We need to foster an appreciation for the United States of America. And the path forward, it's not easy. It's difficult, right? We, we didn't get into this position overnight. Years and years of chipping away, chipping away. So we're not going to change it overnight. And that's where we have to commit ourselves. We have to commit ourselves to the principles that have made our country great. We have to be vigilant. We have to unify as a nation. I'm not talking about R's and D's, Republicans and Democrats. I'm talking about as Americans, challenge the forces that want to divide us, that seek to undermine everything that we're supposed to be standing for. It's not too late to change course, but it does require effort and determination. It requires us to actually get involved. Now, I hope you found the content of this episode informative. If you did, please give the PAS Report a five-star rating on any podcast platform that allows it. Take 30 seconds to write a review and share this episode with your family and friends and on social media. Now, on Monday, I got a great uh, episode lined up. I got a great guest coming on. We're going to talk about how this idea of capitalism in America, how it's a product of the past, that we're not really a capitalist country. So you're not going to want to miss that. Make sure to visit the PAS Report website, pasreport.com. I want to thank you for joining me, and I'll be back next week with other great episodes of the PAS Report podcast. Thank you for listening to the PAS Report. Don't forget to rate, share, and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll never miss an episode. For more exclusive content and updates, visit us at pasreport.com. And follow Professor Giordano on all social media platforms at PAS Report.